When you think about prayer, what comes to mind? Thanking God for your food? Asking that your kids would be healthy? Or your day be good? There's nothing wrong with these prayers. But what if God wants us to take more risk when we pray? To be bold and unafraid. God, search my heart. Break my heart. Fill my heart. God, send me where you want me to go. If we are daring enough to pray this way, it might be exactly what moves your life from a place of safety to something more dangerous. Well, I just want to say welcome. Uh, you've been welcomed really well, but if you're joining us online or you are in the room, uh, man, I'm excited to be with you. Um, see, I believe that we are getting ready to enter into a season where God's going to shake some things up. Uh, that's why I heard an amen. We're going to say amen, all right? Like, I, I believe that that is why we are getting ready to enter into this series called Dangerous Prayers. God is going to invite us into something bigger. God's going to invite us to begin to move in a new direction. And can we just all acknowledge really quickly, like, humanity is awesome. Can you look at your neighbor and go, you? Try it, okay. <laughs> say, you. you. Let's say it one more time. You, you. are awesome. awesome. Right? Humanity's amazing. I mean, we can put people on the moon. Elon Musk He's going to, the, the CEO and, and founder of Tesla and SpaceX, he's going to get people to Mars. I mean, that's incredible. I can't even imagine 10 months in a spaceship. And then we're going to get to Mars and we're going to discover, guess what? They've got the best cheese ever. <laughs> right? Like, humanity is incredible. And we, guys, we live in a day where people are actually founding things called, like, charity water that's trying to solve the world water crisis. They're trying to get water, clean drinking water to 800 million people. There are people that are finding ways to sustainably farm so that the whole world can have food. I believe this, that we are hardwired. God has made us to have an impact in the world. God has created us to, to have a, a unique and, and a special story and a way to bring about the goodness. Because you and I, we have a power. We have a gifting we have a calling. See, every person that walks the face of the earth has access to a power that's even stronger than the strongest person, the world's strongest man. And our hope, our desire is that we can help every one of us begin to engage with this power. Our hope at Prairie Heights is that we would walk out of these doors and be aware of this power that is accessible through Jesus to every single one of us. See, Jesus desires that each one of us would tell a better story. We would live a better life. It says in the Bible that he died that we might have life and life to the full. And God's calling us into a new season. He desires that we would impact our local community. Beth was just talking about it. God wants us to impact our local community in such a way that when we're no longer here, our life continues to bring hope to those around us. See, when we offer God what we have, and we center ourselves in the power of God, that becomes a catalyst for significant change, and we're going to begin to see lives transformed and people set free. And in this season, God's going to begin to shake things loose. I think it's time for us to walk in a new freedom and to begin to receive a new power. Now, the way that we access this power is through something we call prayer. And some of us immediately dismiss prayer, right? Like, uh, maybe you grew up in a home where you had a prayer book and you recited a specific prayer. Or maybe you came from a faith background where only certain people were allowed to pray. 
And so you feel completely unqualified to pray. Can I just tell you this right now? Prayer is simply having a conversation with God like I'm talking to you. It's that simple. It's that easy. See, (laughs) I am convinced when I talk to people, there are some of us that think God doesn't even care about our prayers. And prayer becomes scary. And prayer becomes something that we don't feel qualified for. But I want us to hear this. If we're going to have a better story, if we're going to see the world be transformed, you and I, we have to begin to access this power called the Holy Spirit. And we have to start praying dangerous prayers. And so one of the ways that we want to equip each other is that we would begin to give easy, tangible ways to step into this relationship with the living God. See, God through Jesus, told us something so clearly in the book of Matthew. When Jesus was teaching us how to pray, this is what he said. And literally, the title is Effective Prayers in my Bible. It says this, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for everyone. Does that mean you have to be special? Does that mean you have to have the title pastor? Does that mean that you have to do some special dance? No, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. The one who knocks, the door will be opened. That's what Jesus told us. That's what Jesus told us. And for those of us who are saying, you know what? God doesn't care about my prayers. God doesn't even care about me. I want you to hear this. Jesus went on further in the book of Matthew. He said that God cares about every detail. God cares about every detail. This is, this comes from the book of Matthew chapter 10 verses 29. This is in the message. Maybe you've heard this before. Maybe you haven't. It says this, what's the price of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last detail even numbering the hairs of head, hair on your head. So don't be intimidated by this bully talk. Can I just tell you right now, there's a bunch of people in our world that want to be bullies and they want to convince us that we don't need to run after the things of God. And I just want you to hear this right now, right here. God is not intimidated by people. God is above people and God is calling us to walk in freedom. You are worth more than a million canaries. God cares down to the last detail. See, prayer gives us access to the most powerful thing in all of the universe, and that thing is called the love of God. And I I honestly think it's a little funny and and just speaks to where we're at that we've reduced prayer down to rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub, yay God! You know, (laughs) like... And, and honestly, it's like you walk up to the world's strongest man, you're like, um, can you open my pickle jar? My hands are a little sweaty. You know, like, dude, you have access to the most powerful thing ever. And we just say, God, I just, I just want this. I just, just this little thing. No. God has so much more for us. God has so much more for us. See, prayer is not a button to be pushed It's a relationship to be pursued. Prayer is not a button to be pushed. It's a relationship to be be pursued. And God desires above all things to have relationship with us. He loves us. And that love can't be earned. It's a free gift available to every single person on the face of the earth. Because God desires to have relationship with us. The first dangerous prayer that we can pray is, God, search me. What do you feel when you say, God, search me? What's your gut response? I bet a lot of us are like, heck no, man. I don't want God to search me. God's going to be angry at me. He's going to see all my brokenness. He's going to think I'm not enough. But when we can allow God's love to be at the forefront of that searching out, it changes everything. When I understand that God's love will never be changed, no matter what I do, 
that there's not one thing I can do to earn it more or that he'll love me less. When I can understand that, then I can invite God into the deepest and the darkest places in my life, the places of my greatest brokenness. And you know about those places, right? The places where your hands start to get sweaty when you think about them, the, the places where you start to get flushed in the face, where when somebody brings that up or you're, you're talking about it, you, you start to feel shame or maybe you become defensive. You know what? Because God loves you, you can invite them even into those places. Because of God's love, we can stand before him in prayer without fear of retribution. God simply desires for us to change direction and to lay down our old ways of living. God is not an angry judge. He is a loving father who desires to restore all broken things in our lives and make us new. See, maybe you've read in, in scripture about a man named King David. David was called a man after God's own heart. He wrote the book of Psalms and David was a powerful and amazing man. But David had an incredibly big moral failure. I mean, from the human perspective, if you were stacking up sin, David committed the ultimate one. See, David cheated on his wife, and then the lady he cheated on his wife with, he had her husband murdered. David was a murderer and an adulterer. And this deeply affected his life. It, it caused a whole bunch of ripple effects. But when David was finally confronted with his sin, watch this, he didn't run. He didn't run. He didn't hide. He said, God, I want to be restored. I want to be made right. I want to have relationship with my heavenly father put back together. And see, David just was gut level honest with God. And I want us to understand, we don't have to have these perfect words. We just need to have a heart that desires relationship. I want you to hear this. This is what David prayed when he was confronted with his sin. Purify me from my sins and I will be made clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt and create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a loyal spirit within me. God loves you. So what? God loves you so you don't have to filter your prayers. Prayer unleashes the potential inside of us because we don't have to pretend anymore. God loves you, so what? Stop filtering your prayers. God loves you, stop not living into your potential. God loves you, so stop pretending and start getting healing. See, David wrote this song or this prayer that you and I can pray today. It's something that if we can get it in our hearts, it will change the trajectory of our life. It will become something that anchors us, that lives inside of us, and that constantly realigns us with the truth that God loves us and that he desires for our hearts to be connected with his. So when we pray, we pray, God, would what happens up there happen down here? That's how Jesus taught us to pray, very simple, in the Lord's Prayer. And when Jesus is saying this, when he is speaking this to his friends, he's letting them know that we are to ask God to search me till there is nothing hidden. Search me, God, until there is nothing hidden. So the second thing I want to unpack for us today is God loves us. So he's not afraid of your brokenness. We can be vulnerable with God and invite him in because his love is not withdrawn no matter what. He just wants to give us a way forward. When David wrote Psalm 139, 23 and 24, he was in a place where he was asking God to do something different in him. And I want us to understand why this is so dangerous. Oftentimes, 
I'm pretty easy on myself. I don't know about you. Oftentimes I look at my performance instead of my character, and if I performed well, it doesn't matter how well my character is developed. Oftentimes, I'm just like a grandma <laughs> who says, oh, bless your heart. When I mess up, instead of asking God to change me, I'm like, oh, bless my heart. Watch this clip. We need the butter though, okay? Okay. Good job, Kay. Kay, we have time for butter. A cup of sugar, okay? Yes. Okay, you ready? Yes. What is this? Um, cream. Sugar? Sugar. Okay, hold it over. Right. <laughs> Which case? <laughs> All right, what's next? After the sugar. Oh, geez. it has to be packed in there. So put it in. Don't eat the brown sugar. Oh my gosh, no. and put it in. Oh, yep. No, we don't eat. <laughs> That's right. Okay, ready? No eating eggs. Crack and put it in. Can we just say thank you, Jesus, for grandmas? I mean, she is so patient. I'm like, that little boy needs to go to timeout. But when I'm honest, I'm that little boy. I'm living my life not being patient. I'm living my life not allowing God to direct and guide me. I'm living my life however I want. Whatever is a good idea in the moment, I'm going to go after that. And maybe that's where you find yourself today too. And the reason that this prayer is so powerful, the reason that David wrote Psalm 139 is because he began to realize that he needed a bigger power, a greater power than himself to give him direction. So this is what David said. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. Can I just ask you something? How's your heart right now? How's your heart right now? What is God speaking to you? What is, what is he telling you when you begin to get gut level honest? Because when I'm honest, guys, I'm anxious. I look at our world right now and I say, what is going on? I look at our country and I worry, where are we going to be in 40 years if this is our current state of morality? I worry about finances. I worry about debt. I worry about my own family. I worry about our community and our country. <laughs> I see on Facebook people posting, the end is near, and they made memes out of it. But the reality is, like, that's funny, but it shows how irreverent we are. Like, if, if things are getting bad, like, we need to begin to pray. See, when I begin to ask God to search me, I enter into a new level of relationship with him. I'm saying, God, I need you to evaluate my actions and my thoughts because I'm a poor evaluator. I don't really allow myself to see my own brokenness. See, I think we've become experts at finding fault in others. We watch the news or we scroll through social media and how many times you go, mm, shouldn't have posted that. Oh, why'd you wear that? I don't know what you're doing there. Gosh, I'm so glad my life is good and your life is a dumpster fire. <laughs> See, I don't evaluate my own heart. I walk around going, my intentions are good. 
I didn't mean for that to hurt your feelings. I'm sorry that you felt that way when I said this. Maybe you don't say that, but I have. And that's why I can't be the evaluator of my own heart. I can't be. I need to invite God into that space, and I need to let him share with me if there's any offensive way in me. And do you know how we begin to see prayer answered? Do you know how that happens? The power in prayer comes when we pray God's heart. When we talk to God about what he wants, when we say, God, what's happening up there? Would it happen down here? When we start living there, that's when the power begins to happen in prayer. And frankly, it's easy to brush over our brokenness because we say, well, bless my heart. I have a pure heart. The Bible tells us that the human heart is deceitful above all things. It tells us to reach in and grab an egg knowing that there's salmonella in there and it's going to kill us. But how many of us are living in relationship with sin that way, knowing that the thing you're doing is going to end up ruining your life, but you keep reaching in that bowl anyway? See, when we invite God to search us, we might be surprised at what we find out. We will see good that we never saw, and we'll be confronted with some of the bad, the hard, dark, and ugly places that we don't want people to see. See, God's strength This power, the greatest power in all the universe is available to us at any time. But oftentimes we endure brokenness instead of overcoming because we don't want to invite God to lead us in the way everlasting. See, when I begin to examine my own heart and the things that I'm praying for, I'm confronted that I'm not praying earth shattering or mountain moving or great faith building things. I'm praying, God, would you, would you provide us with an easy and pain-free life? Would you help us not to have any difficulty? And can I be honest? There's probably a lot of us in this room that pray the same thing, and those are small prayers, and those are selfish prayers. Those aren't dangerous at all. I'm not risking anything if God doesn't deliver I'm simply playing it safe because my view of God is simply too small. (laughs) I don't want to be disappointed and I don't have the, the relationship with him in such a level that I can trust him fully. I haven't seen him deliver in miraculous ways. So I'm just going to say, God, help me. Take care of me. Instead of stepping into bold and dangerous things where, God, if you don't show up, I'm going to fall flat on my face and I need you, Jesus. I think a lot of us live that way. We don't want to be disappointed with God or ourselves, so we don't pray big prayers because we don't want to be let down. Praying safe prayers places myself in the driver's seat of life instead of God. Living that way tells him that I don't really trust him. I don't really trust him. God desires for us to pray differently. And it starts by saying, God, would you search me? Your love It's right there with me, and you can be with me in my brokenness. So search me. God, you know the number of hairs on my head. Would you know me? And God, I want want to live different. Would you lead me? See, I want to live a life that's built to last. I want to live a life built on a firm foundation. And that starts by my prayers being connected with the most powerful presence in all of the universe. Maybe you've heard of a book called Built to Last by Jim Collins. It's a business book that looks at organizations. And in that book, he says, there are goals that we call BHAGs. I practiced all week to say that right. So (laughs) big, hairy, audacious goals. See, those are goals that happen 
when they're bigger than our own ability, when they're, they're connected to something that's more focused than a bigger organizational structure. And I think if we start asking God to search us, to know us, and to lead us, he's going to say, guys, I want you to begin to pray behaps. Big, hairy, audacious prayers. I want you to begin to pray that God would heal our land. That God would begin to restore relationships. That God would help scientists find a vaccine for COVID-19. That God would begin to restore our broken political system. That God would begin to restore racial relationships. That God would begin to set us free from our bondage of debt. And God would begin to lead us in the way everlasting. I think God is asking us in this season, would you start praying big, hairy, audacious prayers? See, this is a month devoted to dangerous prayers. So this is what I want us to begin to do. I want us to begin to pray. I want us to pray for each other. I want us to pray for the mental health of our city and our area. I want us to pray that God would do what only God can do. And for many of us today, you're going to hear me talk, and talking's great, but if we don't start doing, we're going to miss the power that God has for us when we begin to pray, when we actually begin to engage. See, maybe in this season, you, you've just prayed, God, would, would you save my business? God would, God, would you give us an easy day? <laughs> I just need a little less stress. And I just want you to know, God cares about that prayer and that's an honest prayer, but God has so much more. This last weekend, Chris and my wife planned a a special getaway for my 40th birthday. We were up on Lake of the Woods and we went fishing. And it was incredible. We We were out 15 miles in the boat. I've never fished on big water like that. And the day's just amazing, right? Like the sun is out, there's just a little bit of clouds, it's fantastic, the water's so calm, and I look up and the trees are just all the colors, like it's so amazing, and I'm just like, God, this is so awesome. This was the first moment I'd been still in months, and I have to confess that. And out of nowhere, our guide goes, hey, here comes the wind. And it was like God spoke in my heart, Mike, Watch what I'm about to do. And I've never heard anything like this. Like, it was like a crackle. I could hear the wind coming across the water. It was like this crackling. I'm like, what is going on? And then all of a sudden, I could feel the wind. It was blowing. And then (laughs) out of nowhere, the waves started going up and down. And we'd been fishing with a big group of boats. We were all fishing off this reef. And I looked up, and all the boats were gone. And God said, Mike, pay attention. Watch what I'm about to do. Mike, pay attention. Watch what I'm about to do. We kept fishing, and our guide said, hey, guys, I think the boat's drifting. I'm going to go up and check the anchor. He walks up and grabs the anchor, and sure enough, it broke free. And in that moment, God's like, Mike, that's what I want you to see. That's what I want you to see. See, 2020 has felt like a year where the anchor has broken free, where the things that we have depended on, the things that have focused us and and centered us and grounded us, gosh, those things are not there anymore. Those things feel very unstable. And I, I know for me and maybe for you, 2020 has been a year of fear. But God said, Mike, in that moment, this is not a year of fear. This is a year of freedom. We're going to begin to break things free that we thought were our source of strength and our anchor. But you and I, we need to begin to let God break us free from the old patterns and the old ways. And God's going to begin to bring healing and victory and freedom in our lives. Amen. See, we need to actually pray. I want to invite you into a moment of vulnerability. God loves you. So what? God loves you. 
So I want you to stop pretending and I want you to start living into the potential that God has. And that starts by saying, God, would you search me? So for those of us online, there's a button that you can click and it will take you to a link where you can pray. You can, you can submit a prayer request. And guys, everyone in the room, there's a post-it note. And I want you to take that post-it note and I want you to write down what is going on in your heart. See, when I was in that boat, I heard the wind. And then I felt the wind. And then I saw the wind. And I believe that some of you right now are hearing the wind. And some of you right now are feeling the wind. And I believe that if we begin to pray dangerous prayers, we're going to start seeing the wind. We're going to start seeing freedom. We're going to start seeing victory. We're going to start seeing our world flipped upside down. And the things that we thought mattered aren't going to matter because we're going to be running after something that's so much bigger and better than anything we can ask or imagine. I'm about to preach, friends. Come on. Yeah. Woo! So this is what we're going to do today. I want us to pray Psalm 139, 23 and 24. God, would you search me? Would you know me? Pray that every day this week and see what happens. And I want you to take that yellow sticky note and I want you to write your prayer on there. Because here's what we're going to do. At the end of this month, we're going to gather and we're going to pray for 24 hours as a church. Some of us in this room right now, we're saying, you know what? I've never prayed. Today is your day to pray. Some of you are saying, I've never asked God to give me anything. I want you to ask God to give you his heart, to search you, to know you, and to begin to set you free. And that's what we're going to do when we pray dangerous prayers. Let's pray. Father God, we give you thanks because you are good. Jesus, I pray that you are setting our hearts ablaze with the wind. Father, that we would listen for it. We would, we would trust that you are moving as only you can move. God, I pray that you would take us out of the place where we can depend on ourselves and we would be motivated, God, by the truth that your love never fails. And that we can risk big things and we can pray dangerous prayers and we can begin to see marriages restored and addictions broken and freedom, God, in our finances. And we can begin to see you move as only you can move. And Jesus, I give you thanks because you are faithful. Be with us today, God. Let us be fully attentive to what you have to say. Thank you, Jesus for being a part of this place. We are so honored to sense your presence. We give you praise, God, in your name we pray. Amen.